Welcome back. You're watching the Double X Factor. I am, of course, still in Delhi. In fact, I'm at the Gargi College's cricket ground. And our guest this week is Arjuna Award winner and cricketer Anjum Chopra. Anjum, it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Now, you saw that report which we played out. Now, we're going to get your perspective and your experience on what it is to be a sportswoman. How much have things changed from 1995, which is around when you made your yeah. debut? Uh, things have changed uh, quite a lot and nothing, both I say that, <laughs> quite a lot in the sense that uh, yeah we've travelled a long road in 15 years and uh, yeah there has been a little more increase in the media publicity, uh, there's been a little more uh, attendance but again I say not much because if I say from 95 what we had, uh, the kind of uh, audience and the kind of uh, background that the sport had and what the people used to follow it, it hasn't increased in leaps and bounds as much as it should have increased from the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we still remain an amateur sport, we still remain a sport which is fighting for everything and fighting for its space mm -hmm. in the male dominated sport mm -hmm. which is still remains to be a male dominated sport. So uh, it's not really progressed much but yes, uh, one thing which has really happened more is the hope that has progressed from 95 to 2005 <laughs> and 2010 today. So it's like the hope has really increased in leaps and bounds. In 2000 six uh, because of an ICC initiative, uh, the BCCI integrated in the Women's Cricket Association of India into the BCCI. Now we all know how much money the BCCI has. We all know how uh, you know what kind of professional standards the BCCI can achieve in terms of uh, staging of events and all of that. Has that not helped the cause of uh, women's cricket? Well, we don't know how much the BCCI has because it hasn't been shown in the women's cricket per se. Uh, we haven't seen that side of it yet, uh, or not largely enough. But, uh, well, to be honest, yeah, BCCI coming to the fore has helped us, uh, you know, infrastructural-wise, uh, from uh, what we used to get. Wasn't bad, but then we get better facilities now. Uh, the kind of uh, awareness in terms of skill-wise, skill developments, uh, overall game developments, yes, that has really happened. We're getting the best of the best facilities, uh, whether it's taking, uh, making use of the National Cricket Academy facilities or whether our state associations helping the cause, uh, international cricketers, uh, whether it's Mr. Sandeep Patel coming to help or former coach at the NCAA day, what more helping us. We have been getting all those expertise help. But uh, what coming to more the can the BCCI do? Let's say they are listening. What more can they do so that, you know, the fact that it's under their chhatra chaya now, yeah. it really impacts the game? See, one thing, uh, rather I'll be very honest, for, for our sport to really come up, uh, we need to be world beaters and we need to be world beaters consistently. It's not happened even once, so consistently becomes a far more distant dream. And to become world champions, we need to work as a, as a unit, as a, as a complete family together. The players have to be ably supported, not hold one international tournament in a year and I say, hey, we are, we are having you for the 12 months. So you go out there and train for 12 months, you know, stand here in the heat, uh, you know, and, and train. Train for what? For one international tournament, which is five days or seven days of international training. When was the last tournament you played? We played the T20 World Cup in, in West, West Indies. Indies. That was in May. Today we are at the end of September. Uh, when is your next tournament? We don't know. We start domestic cricket in November, first week of November. We were supposed to be having an international series end of December, but that looks uh, to be called off or postponed. That's what the rumor is going about. Hmm. But we don't know when we play the next tournament. We, we know when the boys play the next tournament, but we don't know. So I'm not saying that the girls the boys don't have any time on they that don't have fixed time. to us program to so that, for, play for, any more tournaments. Yeah, exactly. For a, for, a, for a cricketer who's at the peak of performance or a, and, and wants to go back to the ground every now and then, hmm. you don't have enough time to go back because you don't have... I would like to fail at the international level, I'd like to succeed at the international level. For that, I want to go back to the international level and make sure that I perform, perform, perform and improve. That's what's going to make me a world champion. That's going to make me a world beater. But if that doesn't happen, you know, it becomes very difficult to keep telling yourself, come back to the field. What do I tell a youngster? Keep working hard. You will, you will be there one day. The commercial world, the world of sponsors and brands and media, all very excited that more and more women are watching cricket. But are more and more women watching women play cricket? I don't really think so. Why is that? Um, I still think we've not been able to sell the game to the audience. Uh, it's like uh, sell an idea, hit a jackpot. Mm. It is a marketing problem. It's not that the sport is a problem. The sport is, is sold out. It is, uh, it's already a country's hit. It's a world hit sport that's cricket. Half the job is done for uh, women's cricket when we say we've played a sport called cricket and we play a same game which plays by the same rules that the boys play. So half your job is already covered. Now the next better angle comes in is women's cricket. Now it's not difficult to sell women's sport per se, 
yes, you need to probably tailor make it here and there a bit, tweak it a bit to sell it to the audience. But then the, the idea is of selling it on a mass. And when you sell it, what is IPL? It is for a mass hmm. consumption for all mass people to go and watch the uh, the game. In so fact, you, you know, Anju, I think more people saw you on the IPL pre and post game programming than they have actually seen you perform as a cricketer. Well, that's not the best thing I want to hear as a cricketer. <laughs> but yes, I mean, I but feel there really is a truth to that. There isn't is a truth. It? You know, I feel I feel very humbled and very uh, happy when people come up to me and say, "Hey, we, we really liked you. And, you know, we really like your." Comments. I enjoyed watching you a lot. Thank you so much. And you know, I feel very very honored and humbled. I and think it's one of the best decisions that you know they could uh, they uh, Sony could have taken where its programming was concerned and I well, hope they're well, listening. I, mean, I hope so, I hope so, you know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's not that easy to perform uh, at that level as well. Okay, let's shift focus to the world of brands and, you know, corporate India uh, because they are constantly looking for new heroes and heroines, icons, right? They're always looking for icons to piggyback their brands on. You need stupendous success, breakthrough international success or national success. You need glamour and you need visibility and this comes you know this is difficult for all non cricket sports and more difficult for sports women do you agree um no see i think in all these uh, attributes i only say visibility you need to be more visible to be more appreciable and you need to be visible to get something uh, the problem with women's sports is that they're not very much visible the where uh, men's uh, cricket scores over all the other sports are because they are always on TV. If, if it's not a live match happening in India, it's happening somewhere else. And if it's not live, there's a discussion happening. And if it's not a discussion, it's a repeat telecast. Mm. So all the time you're having cricket on the channels. And that's where the, uh, the connect of the audience with any cricketer comes through much more easily and with a brand connection mm. comes much more easily than any other thing. But having said that, uh, there is also, you know, you go back to that chicken and egg situation, which is that why should a brand or a corporate invest in a sports woman or sportsman Absolutely. if they don't have uh, the visibility? Because they can't do it out of uh, out of uh, goodwill or charity or uh, sympathy, right? right? What do you do to break this barrier? I think uh, once a chicken and egg story starts, then you know you have we have our hands up and say, hey, I can't what do can much. Do? What can we do? Uh, if that be the case, then we won't have had a PT Usha coming from one small little town to becoming a world champion. We won't have had a Mary Com who nobody knows where she was till the time she became a world champion and where she will be after she finishes. We won't have even spoken about a Karna Maleshwari or a Shiny Wilson. We won't have spoken about it. We won't have had them. I won't say just support them. I'll say, okay, once they become champions, support them. Now, once they become champions, that's the time at least you can associate yourself. But the minute they become champions, they say, hey, this is a very dying sport. Hey, this is not a sport which attracts attention. Nothing will attract attention till the time we start at giving attention to it. Organizations can hmm. share it as a goodwill. Hmm. It's not that they cannot. Hmm. They, they, they can raise up. Huh. For example, a Mittal Trust, for right. example, an Olympic Gold Quest organization. Yeah. They are supporting Olympians. Yeah. They're targeting the 2012 Olympics yeah. and future on. So there are, somebody has to raise their hand up and say, hey, we support this cause and we make sure we make champions. One final question before we get into a break. And that is, as a cricketer, what was your dream? What was the ambition for you as a, as a target? What did you want to achieve? Uh, as a personal milestone, I w I've always wanted to be the best in the business. And the bigger dream as a team, I've always wanted to uh, lift that World Cup trophy. Uh, it's eluded us many a times now. I've, I don't want even to mention it how many times I've played a semi-final. I've played uh, six World Cups now, four 50 over World Cups, two, uh, two 50, 20 World Cups, and we've made it to all semi-finals. So I can say I've been a member of six semi-final team and one final. 2005, we made it to the final uh, against Australia in South Africa. We still missed it. So that World Cup dream still eludes me. That World Cup trophy, the, the, the celebration of the champagne going on in a dressing room, the, the celebration of uh, sports people just falling here and there because they're drunk. Uh, <laughs> you want to experience <laughs> that. I want to experience that. I want to experience how a dressing room uh, cannot be when controlled you're at the when you're the of yourself. Absolutely. And, it, and, and that, that cohesion and the cohesiveness amongst that, the camaraderie in the team that goes through, the tension that goes through of a final, the final ball being bowled and then you celebrating as a unit, that experience. I have, a celeb I have experienced it when we won the semi-final at the World Cup in South Africa at Poches Strom and we knew we were in the finals against Australia in, in, in Centurion Park. I, I remember it still and it gi still gives me goose flesh, you know. It's too, so very fresh in my mind. I've played three World Cups after that, but that 2005 is still fresh in my mind. But I still want to experience 
my, my hands across, you know, holding and just clasping the, against that World Cup trophy oh, because it's, it's so very great. me goosebumps. Let's take a commercial <laughs> break. We're going to come back and continue talking to Anjum and we're also going to tell you something else. A lot of women are traveling on holidays on their own these days. We're going to tell you what are the three destinations that are on top of that holiday list. <laughs>